Okay, part three, the global stiffness matrix of the triangular element. Okay, global stiffness matrix, because in the previous slide we talked about the element stiffness matrix, but to solve the entire structure, you need to know the global stiffness matrix. So the global stiffness matrix, in order to understand this, you need to know or you need to be able to assemble different parts together. Okay, to the assembly, this is a, this is a, um, some people already know this actually. So the assembly is similar to the uh, bar element and the beam element. You need to have the corresponding. Okay, you need to have the corresponding. Once you ha you have the corresponding, then everything else be easy to do. Okay, let's have a look at the example here. So we have a structure here. We have a big structure. One, two, four, five, six, three. It's big structure. And we math we mesh it with four elements. One, two, three, four. Okay, we mesh with four elements. And uh, for the global stiffness matrix, we check how many nodes we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our global stiffness matrix, the big global stiffness matrix. And of course, because this is a, a triangular two-dimensional case, so for each node, we have U1, V1. So for two, uh, node two, we have U2, V2, node three, we have uh, or for example, node, node 6, we have U6 and V6. So here we need to find the, the corresponding between the element and the global. Then we will know how do we put those element stiffness uh, component in the corresponding locations. So let's check. Okay, let's have a look. So for the element 1, we have the local or the element nodes I1, J1, M1. And for element 2, we have I2, J2, M2. Element 4, we have I4, J4, M4. And here, I1 is uh, is correspond to the 3, okay? And the J1 is correspond to 1, okay? So we then we know K, K, I, let's have a look. Uh, here we, 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 we use element 2 for the demonstration because you see here the subscript is 2. So then let's have a look at uh, element 2. So element 2, the I2 is corresponding to 5. Okay, I2 corresponding to 5. So which means, so which means K, I, I, K, I, I. That's KII. So you see KII and the 2. So this is a 2. It corresponding to 5. So we need to, in the, in the, in the row, it's 5. In the column, it's also 5. Okay. And the J2 is uh, co corresponding to 2. So which means KJJ will J, uh, uh, be in the, in, the, in the row 2, column 2. Okay. And M2 corresponding to 5, so which means K M M will be in the in the row 4 and the column 4, okay. Then how about uh, KIJ, K, K, KIJ, how, then how about KIJ, and it is also for element 2, KIJ, element 2, so KIJ, KIJ, because I corresponding 5, and the J corresponding to two, so which means K I J will be in the in the row five and the column two, and then then the the the, the K J I will be in row two and the column five, column five. Okay, so so in principle you just use those corresponding, then you can manage to put uh, the element component in into this big matrix. Okay, so. Let me repeat the procedure. So the procedure is first you, you write out the global matrix, the big global matrix, 
And the big global matrix is is according to how many nodes you have, how many nodes you have, and then you write the 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 nodes uh, uh, corresponding from the element to the global, from the element to the global. Then you you find uh, put them into the uh, corresponding location based on the corresponding. Okay, and if you don't understand, to do please to do more exercise after the class, okay? And uh, after we, after you done this, you will notice K is a symmetric matrix, okay? The global stiff matrix is a, is a symmetric matrix, okay? So which means this one equals to this one, this one equals to this one, okay? And this is a symmetric matrix, so we don't need this big matrix, so we can kind of we can reduce it, and uh, it's a it's a it's a symmetric matrix. So which means for very big structure, it is a sparse matrix. What does it mean? The sparse matrix, which means most elements in K are zeros. Most elements in K are zeros, and this is a trouble for the uh, for the program. If you do the program in in C or even in MATLAB, if you have a big matrix and most of them are zero, because in MATLAB or in in, in C or Fortran, you need to allocate the, the 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 allocate the dimension for the matrix. If it is a large matrix, it will take a lot a lot memory for the calculations. So so we really we need to reduce. We we need to use the the, the the property to reduce the size or to increase the calculation efficiencies. So and then how do we do this? Okay, uh, we will talk in the, in the next slide. So let's have a look at these properties. So let's have a look how um, what does the sparse means and how many non-zero elements and what are the the the, the zero elements. So. For example, for node uh, six node connected to node five, so we use node five. Okay, <coughs> six node connected to to node five, so we have seven non-zero elements in row five, in row five. So, so first is uh, two. Okay, it's two, we corresponding to two, and uh, so this is. Uh, non-zero and the second is connected to node three. So this is non-zero, this is non-zero. A second is connected to five to four, so this is non-zero. And then itself, then five five is non-zero. And also connected to six. So six this is non non-zero. And then it's connected to eight. So eight this is non-zero. Connected to nine. So nine is non-zero. So so which means so which means this the the six nodes connected with with node five there are seven non-zero elements, and we also we know the more the nodes the the sparser the elements. So, so, so this five they connected to to six nodes. That's why they they they, they have many many non-zero. But for example, for 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 let's have a look at the seven. For this one, it's only connected to two nodes. And uh, and plus itself, so it only has three non zeros. Uh, only have three non zeros, so which means it has seven zero components. Seven zero components. Okay, and uh, the more the nodes and the sparser the matrix. This is so this is the property, another property of the global stiffness matrix. And this is talk about the uh, reduce. The reduction of the global stiffness matrix. We said it is a the global stiffness matrix is a symmetric and it's a sparse matrix. So we 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 we, we use a, a technique to reduce it, and uh, so in order to increase the the calculation efficiencies. So for the storage, the 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 matrix, the global stiffness matrix, can be reduced to n times n to times to n. So the original matrix is n times n and we can reduce to 
d times n, where d is the half band width, half band width. So this is how we calculate the half band width. So the half band width equals to the maximum node number difference in this element. The maximum node number difference in the element plus one, and then times the omega. Omega is the node de degree of freedom. So which means the omega is two for the two-dimensional triangular elements. Okay. So which means uh, in terms of mathematics, so d equals to the maximum di. Okay. Well, n is the number of elements. Number of elements. Okay. So, so we have the so here is the graph. So we keep. The, 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 the number of rows the same, so we still have n, n rows, but the column is reduced. So the first column of the reduced matrix is the triangular of the original, is the triangular component of the original matrix. So we said because it is a, it is a, it is a symmetric matrix, so we only need to, to, to store the information in the in the upper in the upper triangular and then be enough. And then how do we how do we how do we do this? So we, we calculate we get the the the, the, uh, the dimension from the the, the last non zero element non zero element the di the distance from the non zero element to the triangular uh, element to the corresponding uh, the corresponding diagonal element like here we calculate those days for each row so for each row we calculate the maximum distance between the diagonal element and the last non-zero element non-zero element we calculate for each and then we pick the maximum one we pick the ma maximum one okay uh, we pick the for example here and then we store for each row from here to, to the maximum distance, from here to the maximum distance. So in this case, so in this case, in this case, we don't miss any non-zero elements. Okay, in this case, we don't miss any non-zero elements. And uh, and also we, 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 we noticed or we, we find out how do we get the D? We don't need to do it by hand or, 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 or or uh, we don't need to, to do by hand uh, for each uh, uh, matrix because if, if in some case the matrix is very, very large. It's hard to to do the counting for each row. So and then we noticed this can be directly calculated by by work out the maximum node element difference in the in the element. So we only need to to find out the maximum node element difference and then everything is solved. Okay, this is, the, this is how we do the calculation, and we let's have a look the examples. So the example here, we have different, we have the same structure, but we 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 match it, but we arrange the node in different uh, styles or in different ways, and uh, let's have a look how do we calculate. So for for the global different matrix, these three they are the same, right? Because they have the same. Globe, have the same number of nodes. So, uh, in terms of the, in terms of the, node number is all is all is ten by ten matrix. It is a global stiffness matrix. It's ten by ten. But in terms of the, the reduced matrix, they are different because the element number is arranged in different ways. So. Now how do we work out the D? We said we don't need to to count in, in a global matrix for each one. That would be too complex. So we we need only need to find out the the in the previous slide to find out the maximum node displacement, node number difference in the element. So so the node number difference in the neighboring nodes. So for example in this one where is the maximum node number difference? For example, two and five, this is three. Five and uh, nine, this is four. 
okay, and the four and the eight, this is four. This is four. So I think the maximum node number difference is four in this case. Then it's plus one, plus the omega, omega is one, so we have plus one, sorry, plus one. And so we have d equals five, and then times the omega, omega for the two dimensional case is two, so we have 10. And so let's have a look at this case. What's the maximum number difference? So here, 4 and uh, 10 is uh, 6. 4, 9 is 4. And uh, 6, this is 4. This is 3. This is 2. So I think that the, the maximum difference is 6. OK, 6 and then plus 1. So we get 7. And then times 2, omega equals 2, then we get 14. So, so in this case, the d ha half bandwidth is seven. So, and for this case, two and uh, ten. This is uh, eight. This is four, and this is two. Okay. So I think the maximum is eight. Eight plus one is nine, and then nine plus the the deg uh, degree of freedom at each node is eighteen. So. So then we have the for the three structures we have the half bandwidth five seven nine, and uh, we and we we know for the program the smaller the better the smaller the the more efficient is the calculation. So we we, we recommend this one. So this so we recommend this, which means the smaller the difference between the neighboring node number, the better. Okay, the better. So we we when we arrange. When you do your own calculation or do your own program, you it's better you arrange the node number in in this uh, in in the way which uh, minimum the half band width the minimum the half band width, and uh, now we can notice how do we manage this? We can notice by 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 compare these three structures. We can notice, for example, here one two three four five six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's kind of it's in a very, 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 very organized format. So if you are in a very organized format like this, and then the 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 half band width will be the minimum. For example, this is a uh, not organized format. This is a, this is a kind of a, like this. This is a, a still organized, but it's not better than this one. But this one is a, another way. It turn like this. It's, uh, so so always uh, you do different organization and then you compare and then and then try to find the minimum uh, half band width from those organized structure from those organized node number uh, sequences. Okay. And then the other property for the global stiff matrix is the. And the property for the global stiff matrix, uh, here we talk about the physical meaning. So the first, the column K I one, it means the force needed on all the nodes when U U one equals to zero, U I equals to zero, and V I equals to zero. Okay, so this is similar to the to the bar element we have already mentioned. This how do we get the physical meaning of this? Okay, so we. So if we set up those to zero, and then k i one will be equal to the force. So then, which means k i k i one equal to the force when when those conditions are met. So so we set up we set u i equals to u one equals to one u i equals to zero. Okay, so which means this equals to one, and all others equals to zero. Okay, then we do the mathematic. And then we get when we do the mathematic here. So we do the mathematic, and then we get k i, and then this this column times one then equals to this column. So this column is the force. So which means so from here, which means k i one equals to p i p i. Okay. Right, so this is the, the physical, physical meaning. So the column Kij, 
means the force needed on the nodes when when it should be K K K I one K I one okay. So K column K I K I one equals to the force on the nodes when U J equals to 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 one and the others they equals to others they equals to 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 zero okay. Then it's the second property of the global stiffness matrix. It's a, a, a symmetric matrix. It's symmetric matrix. So, so this is uh, from the mathematical point of view. And it's a singular matrix. It's a singular matrix because of this is because of the the rigid displacement. So we know if the the system a deformed body is doing the rigid displacement, then the determinant be equal to zero then we cannot do the inverse so which means we need to we need to introduce the boundary condition to solve the, uh, the equations okay so let's see this okay part four is the equivalent node forces so we already mentioned this uh, in the chap in the previous chapter for the beam element so here we just quickly go through this because we use the Say we use the same approach, and we use the same, uh, the same equations, but it's only for for the different scenarios. So, in the in the beam part, in the beam chapter, we already know. For the is the body force how we trans uh, how we how we work out equivalent load force for the body force and for the for the surface force. And these are the corresponding formula, and here we just. Uh, have a look how we use those formula to work out the the equivalent node force for the for the element nodes. Okay, so first the body force, the body force. This is our body force on this triangular element, and we, we need to 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 work out the equivalent node force for this body force. So we, we we use the formula. Okay, we use the formula. So this is our body force, and then then this is our the shift function. For the triangular element, then we do the integration over the area over the triangular act uh, over the triangular area, and then we calculate one by one. First, we calculate pi. Okay, then pi equals to loss. And we, if you still remember, how do we do the integration here? We have the formula. <coughs> we have the formula to help you to do the integration of the shape function over the area of the triangular so here we just uh, use the formula we can quickly obtain those so once we obtain those and then the other three is the same the other three common p g p m be the same then we can work out the 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 um, equivalent load force for the body force and we can check so this is the body force is in the in this direction. This is the body force in this di direction. So then we should get this should be zero, right? So all the the y the x direction should be zero. So we only have the component in the y direction. So we, we check this will be exactly the same. Okay. So this match our expansion. Okay. Now let's have a look other scenario. Is the under the uniform pressure? The uniform pressure is the uniform pressure. So we have the formula for the uniform pressure. The the this is kind of the the the, the so so we calculate the uniform pressure. We first we 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 calculate the pressure component in the x and in the y direction. So we 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 have a, uh, calculate the component. In these two directions, and then we calculate um, independently, and then we we determine second step. We determine the shift function because we need to use the shift function to calculate the correspond the equivalent load force, and then the, the, we calculate the shift function, and we know for the edge for the this is use our um, our previous knowledge 
for the triangular, the edge, the shift function for the edge is independent of this node and it's only determined by the two nodes. Okay, two nodes. So we, we write it in this term. What we can or we can regard it as a beam element, as a beam. Okay, so then you can understand it better. Then we calculate uh, the 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 equivalent load force in the x direction. Okay, in the x direction, and also in the y direction. Okay, so this is mathematic. So you should do it by yourself after the class. So you have the shift function, and then you put it into the formula, and then you do the integration. You do the integration. You can then you can solve it. Okay, and for the for the other direction is the same. Okay, so we don't do it here. And uh, in the end, you get the 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 uh, equivalent load force for the for the uniform pressure. Okay. The third case is the under the x x uniform pressure, x-x uniform pressure. Okay, so it's similarly by uh, put into the uh, for formulation, uh, we can obtain this. And the, the fourth case is under the triangular, even uh, a little bit more complex, under the triangular pressure case, and then you get this. So this is all for your exercise after class, okay, to, to, to practice and to, to see whether you can obtain those results or not. It will be very good practice. Okay. Okay. Last part is uh, example. We we use the example to demonstrate how we use the finite element method to do the calculation and uh, and uh, and it's important whenever you do your own program. Uh, it's important you 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 understand this procedure so that you can follow those procedure to do all those. Uh, coding or to do all those stuff and you, you so you don't use the commercial software so we have a, a, a two-dimensional um, case here so it's a rectangular and we give the the property Young's modulus perform ratio and the thickness and the, the, the force external force so because we we only demonstrate the, the, the procedure so we don't give the unit here we so we set up all these uh, very, very very simple value one 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 so you want to do uh, you want uh, for the for the hand calculation okay so so, so we have uh, the dimension this is uh, two mini two meters and this is the height one meters so so follow the procedure okay let's follow the procedure to solve this so we first we do the structure discretization okay and uh, we we match the structure using two elements, so element one and element two. Then we have one, two, three, four. We have four nodes, okay, four nodes, and uh, at node three, so this is this end is fixed. So node three is a uh, is a constraint in two in two directions. Node four is also constrained in two directions, and for node one and node two is free to move, but in Node one, node two, they have the external force. It's a half of the f, half the f. So for the calculation, we, we need to write out for the entire structure, the displacement matrix. Okay, displacement matrix. Well, we have four nodes. So each, each node have two degrees. So then we have the eight. And we have the external force matrix, external force matrix. and. Uh, so external force matrix is the external force is uh, in node one, node two, and it's half of the F. And we have the reaction force matrix. Reaction force matrix is uh, the reaction force in node three and node four, node three and node four. And then we put them together, then we have the total node matrix. It's our total node matrix. Okay. We write loads because we want to write out stiffness matrix and then what we do we do we work out the the, the, the shift function for the for each element so then we, we said the shift function depends how we define the, 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 the node so so we need to define our node then the node sequence or node number for each element 
for element number one, we define i, j, m. Element two, we define i, j, m. So then we have the corresponding. Then we use the formula. This is the formula for the for the shift function. Then we use the formula. We, we put it into in the formula. So we don't give details here. So you need to do your own practice. So we have the list table. And then from this table, we can quickly work out an i, n, j, n, m. That's the shift function for the for the element one. Now we can quickly check because we know the sum of the shift function should be should be one. So which means n i n j n m, they should be one. So you can you can check this. I mean exactly is is one. So you should use your property to check whether your answer is correct or not. So we also we know n n i at x i y i at this point it should be one right so then we can put the coordinate of i i is uh, x equals to two and y equals to zero so which means two over two is one so by this way we also check our answer is correct okay this is the cross check double check is one to 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 uh, to have you understand the, the answer is correct or not, or there's a mistake or error in your calculation or not. Then we write out the B matrix. We know the B matrix is a, is a constant matrix for the three node triangular elements. So it's a constant matrix. Then this is our B. Okay, it's only determined by those coefficients. Then it's the stress displacement matrix, and this is depends on the material. So we said our material is linear elastic and it's a small deformation so and then we assume it's a plane stress problems then we have the matrix for, for, for the D okay for the D matrix and then it's the element stiffness matrix we said this is a very complex matrix so we so then how do we do this we just use our the formula we use the formula and put in, in the, the values into the formula and then it's the global stiffness equation. Global stiffness equation. We have two elements, so we just uh, do the summation of the the two element stiffness matrix. And then we have the global stiffness equation. Global stiffness equation. And this uh, the global stiffness equation. We said before we solve this, we want to use the boundary condition to reduce the size of the global stiffness matrix. And then we can solve the uh, the uh, the variables, the unknown variables, that is the node displacement at the nodes. And then once this is solved, then we can quickly solve the reaction force and solve other variables. Okay. So that's all for this chapter, the triangular chapter. This is an important chapter, and it will help you to understand the, the two-dimensional elements and also help you to understand more complex elements and uh, and uh, some take home message from this chapter is the triangular the three node triangular element is a is a, a, a constant string element so which means inside the element you have a constant string and if the is the same property which means if the is the same material in the element which means there'll be the constant stress Element okay, it'll be constant stress element, but the displacement is always continuous in the structure, and this is guaranteed by the property of the shape function, and uh, yeah, and also the, the from the shape function we know the distribution of the shape function in the in the structure in the elements, and uh, and uh, and uh, by using the area coordinates we can quickly work out. The shift function, and uh, we will talk more about this in the in the future lectures. Okay, in the end we have a exercise. Okay, for you to understand to 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 know all this knowledge. So we have a structure. We have we have, a, we have distributed the external force. So to solve this problem, you have to first work out the equivalent uh, force, node force, and then. Then it's a, it's a very simple material. So we have we have model one thickness is one. So and we have the also the self weight. Okay. So if you are interested, you should do this practice. Okay. And uh, 
if you want my feedback, you can hand in the, uh, this this exercise to the teaching teaching assistant, and then we will give you feedback. Okay, that's all for this chapter. Thank you, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.